Haven't opened this box in about 15 years. Garage time. This is the wire harness to my 356, and it's been out of the car for probably 15 years. Uh, just a little background on this harness. Uh, the car was running and all the items worked last time I drove it. And it was a 12 volt system. So there was a few things that weren't perfect, like the windshield wipers went too fast. A couple things weren't right. So I am going to be restoring this harness back to the original six volt, only because originality uh, matters on the 356 and a properly maintained six volt system is every bit as good as a 12 volt system. You just don't have as much ro room for air. There's not as much buffer. So you have to maintain it really well. So that's the negative side. The plus side is this is a lot easier than the 911. There's a lot less circuits. The wiring diagram is more simple and nothing is going to be custom on the wire harness. In addition to the factory workshop manual, I have some good documentation. This is from Greg Bryant, 356 registry. This is the whole car on one page. The 911, my 1974, was spread over about seven pages and it wasn't a schematic, it's a current flow diagram. I have another sort of color notebook from 356 Electrics, Joe Leone, and this covers each circuit individually. Here's an example of the generator light circuit, and it shows exactly what that circuit does all the way back to the generator, how to troubleshoot it, all the numbering, it's really well detailed. So between these two, should be able to determine where the wires go. But the real issue is, can the harness be salvaged? Is it up to the task of flowing enough electrons through to even get the car started? Hey, the focus for today will be mostly on the main wiring harness that goes through the tunnel. I want to get everything through the tunnel in the car before it's time to put the transaxle and the engine back in. This part, you can see how dirty it is, is exposed under the car. All right, to get started, I'm just going to use some uh, hot soap and water to get most of the grime and dirt off this. And it's just a process of cleaning, understand what we got, and see what needs to be repaired. I haven't checked recently the price on a new harness, but I know it's in the thousands of dollar range. Some of these wires have some black paint on them, and I don't know if that was inadvertently done by the factory or if this has just been oversprayed by someone besides me. But that'll come right off. A lot of it's coming off just with the nylon brush. The car was black when I got it, so we're seeing a little bit of the history. Originally Irish green. It's got some green paint on it, and it's also got some black paint on it. Here's a view of the watery mess. Clearly I don't treat my welding table that great, but it's better than a wooden table. Just needs to be sanded again, get some of the rust off of it. Okay, this black and violet goes to the stoplight switch, which is why this is probably so dirty. This goes down underneath the car by the master cylinder. There's a little overspray on one of the harness pieces I might try to save. So this is just a little bit of gray Scotch-Brite. And we just take our time and just clear that off. I finally got to a nice spot where everything is clean, all the overspray is gone and the grease and the undercoating and whatever. And the wires are identifiable and looking okay, there are a few concerns though, and I didn't clean this rubber part too well because I know I'm gonna be replacing that. But in general, it's in pretty good condition. Uh, lots of breaks in the, in the sleeving, like right here, you know, there's two or three breaks in the sleeving, a little burn mark right there. This is in the engine bay. Uh, that terminal's not right. 
The other problem is right here. This is the piece that connects to the ignition switch. And this black white wire is the one that goes directly to the engine coil. And so that's an important wire. And this insulation has been burned or compromised in some way. It's just, I don't know if you can see on camera, there's, you can see a little bit of copper right there, but there's like a split in it right there. I think this side's a little worse. So this has gotten really too hot, uh, burned the wire at some point. This is an unfused wire. It goes to the ignition coil. So this wire needs to be replaced. I'm not gonna run my car with something that is so important as the ignition coil on a wire that's been burnt and it's unfused. That's probably the biggest thing I need to fix. Unfortunately, that goes all the way from the front of the car to the rear of the car, which means I am probably gonna have to redo most of the sleeving in order to get that wire out. It's a 2.5 millimeter diameter wire, which is the heavy one, and it goes directly to the ignition coil. I don't see any other places where it would go. There is a solid black wire, which is the one just adjacent to it here. This one doesn't appear to be burnt, but that's the one that goes directly to uh, fuse number one. I'm gonna remove this rubber <clears throat> sheathing first, but before I remove it, I'm gonna take a few pictures of the junctions here, just so I can reproduce them. This is just black electrical tape, nothing too fancy. So if we pull that straight, I'm getting the rubber piece is about 35 inches long, kind of not including the tape. I think the rubber piece is 35. And then that junction is right at 20 from <clears throat> the loose end. keep this piece. It did end up slicing through there. The wires adjacent to it look like they're in good condition. Sometimes it can take out the whole harness if a wire goes bad. The sleeving's a little brittle anyways. I'm just gonna desolder the uh, terminal end on this and put a loop on it. So I soldered a loop on the end of the wire there this is the one I want to pull out. So this came not apart at the solder joint, it just pulled the uh, copper apart. Couldn't pull hard enough to get the wire extracted. So that means I need to pull more of the sheathing apart. Hopefully not all of it, but uh, gotta keep going. I'm hopeful that I can, you know, take this black white wire. Here it is right here. I'm pretty sure I can snake it through what's left on this end. But now I can snake it through kind of from the middle to the other end. This is going to be the more difficult side here. That's the long run all the way through the tunnel.
So it's out with the old and in with the new. I was able to get that new wire strung all the way through. Here's the wire all the way through on the engine side and it's of course left long. I'm not sure exactly where the coil is. I'll always just cut that later. Now I ran a black wire through here. Um, the one I took out was black white. So most of it gets covered up, but I will use a paint pen and I will trace that white stripe around the, the wire to make it look identical. It's the exact same size wire, two and a half millimeter. It turns out to be 14 gauge. That's the size of wire I put in there. It's just, this is a SXL wire and the, the temperature of this wire is probably a little higher than the existing wire. And the sheath is a little smaller, I think. So good, getting it in was, was no problem. Getting it out was a little difficult. That's where I had to cut in multiple places the sheathing in order to help fish it through. Okay, starting with this end, you can see how this part of the harness needed to have the sheathing replaced anyways. It was uh, broken and cracked. So this is just zip tied in there just to show me where it goes. And then there's just a missing piece right there. It goes into this section. This was all protected by the rubber cover. And then I had to split it right here in order to get access to the wires in this region. So this is just gonna get replaced with all new sleeving. And then it um, carries through here. This has all been cut in order to get that wire in there. So this section is about four feet, that'll get replaced. And then this is the part that was undisturbed. So I was up, able to pull the wire through for the most part. There was a break right here to give me access. Also, it's really helpful to be able to inspect the wires neighboring the one that got too hot. And I didn't see any damage on any of these wires neighboring it at all. This is all unmodified. And then right here where it exits here at the front of the car into the ignition switch, this sheath here had to be cut just to make pulling it through a little easier. So this is only about an 18 inch section that I'll have to redo. And then here's the wire right here coming out this side. I will place those white stripes on it. The other thing I wanted to check into on this wire harness is this right here, this wire is cut. It looks like it's just been cut right through. It looks like two wires and a little bit of sheathing. So I wanna know what those wires are for. Not sure if it was cut by you know, the previous owners, myself, or if maybe this was cut by the factory. So let's take a peek inside and see what color wire these are and then see what they look like on the diagram. So it looks like a brown and a gray brown. And then gray brown to the backup light. This is for the backup light and I, Maybe didn't have that working. I didn't know I didn't have a backup light. So if this goes to the back of the car, side right here, this is the right tail light. So we got the right tail light, the left tail light, and then this would go right to the backup switch right there in the middle. I will extend these wires. Just there's just two wires. It's a ground, which is just solid blue or brown, and then the gray with the brown and extend these two little wires. I'm going to use these barrel connectors as a crimp uh, device with my crimp tool. So this uh, is probably the best way to go considering, you know, these wires might be flexing some. So soldering here, you know, even though a lot of these terminals are soldered on the end, it does um, limit the amount of flex the wire can do. So in this case, I'm going to try these these little terminals here, and I think that'll work well. So just cut two of them off. These are from Tyco. So two of those.
and then it just holds itself in the crimp tool just like that. This is a ratcheting crimp tool, so it puts a little pressure on there, holds it for me while I strip these wires. Now, my good wire stripper has been loaned to someone else, so I have to strip these with a razor blade, which isn't that big of a deal. And because these wires were cut and they were unterminated, the copper is a little bit tarnished. So prior to crimping this, I want to soak this in a solution that will kind of take away some of that tarnish. That's what I did to my 911 uh, fuse box. <clears throat> and it really does kind of restore the copper. It's good to stagger the joint. If the insulation ever were to fail, then these two can't contact each other. So I'm gonna cut this wire just a little shorter so that it has no way for the butt connections to touch each other. This is just white vinegar with salt and I'm just stirring it a little, try to dissolve that salt, the solid salts. So both of those are submerged. You can start to see it bubbling a little bit, which is great. looks like it's doing its work. Just so wanted to show you the color of the copper now. It's just come out of the vinegar and it's, you know, both are really pretty shiny. You can't really tell a difference between which one was corroded and which one wasn't. So now it's gonna go into this solution. This is baking soda, a mixture of baking soda. This is gonna neutralize some of that acid. You can see it bubbling a little bit. And then this might be a little hard to do on camera, but inside here, yeah, that's water, just, just water. See how those crimps come down real tight on the wire. This is every bit as strong as solder, just probably a little bit more secure to be honest with you. So there's no brittle uh, junction where the solder is. So I've, I've used both, but I kind of like this method. And then of course I'll need to add this brown stripe onto the wire and I can just do that with a, with a real thin pinstriping brush. This wire is just brown, so there's no, no, no change on that. It's a little bit of dialectic grease. This repair will be hidden underneath the sheathing anyways. This is some of the sheathing I have left over from the 911 harness. And it's just a little bit too big for this particular connection. So I'll have to order something a little smaller. However, this is the correct diameter for some of the larger sections. Like this is the same diameter right here. That's like a perfect match. So I'll be using some of this. And then I even have some of the bigger stuff. And that might work for the overall chunk like right here. I think that's a good match for that. This section right here is about the middle of the harness and I had to, to cut this piece. I'm gonna to try to replace that with some of the sleeving that I have. This stuff is non-shrinkable, so it's gonna be really difficult to get this all the way into the center of the harness. But because I already have some, I'm gonna cut it to length and just try to make it work. believe it goes like that. Because this is PVC, I can glue it down. So I'll probably glue this section down. I'll clean it really well with acetone, get some of that oil off. And then we just use PVC glue to secure it down. And the other thing I want to do is I want to clean up all the terminal ends. These are, you know, corroded and tarnished over the years. And these are replaceable, but I thought I would just give it a try with my buffing wheel on the drill press. So it's at a really slow speed and you obviously have to be careful when you're polishing something that's as long as a wire harness. You definitely don't want to wrap this around the axle. So I'm going to go real slow here, see if I can polish these as opposed to replacing them. It'll just save a little time, hopefully in the long run. Some of these things are probably too far gone and have to be replaced.
That's about as far as I can go on the main harness. I got all the ends, you know, buffed up. They look pretty nice. I'm gonna have to order some of the replacement terminals, the ring terminals, the ones that were just too far gone. I will recrimp them as soon as I get some new pieces. So I've been placing orders and also checking the other harnesses. Now the other really important piece is this thing here. This is the heavy gauge cable that goes from the battery to the starter. You see this is the lug right here on the starter. And I'm just gonna replace this whole thing. For six volts, it's basically twice the current as you would have for 12 volts. So I'm going to get a, I think the factory was 35 millimeters squared. That's about a little bit bigger than two gauge. I think I'm gonna go with either one gauge or zero gauge. That's gonna get the most current to the starter for the measly six volts. And the, the trick to getting it to start really well is just getting all the power from the battery into the starter. The other trick that I did on the 911 is called the hard start relay. And that eliminates the current going through the ignition switch and gets the full power to the solenoid. So putting a relay really close to the starter is a good idea. This hard start relay is the only non-original thing that I will put on the harness. And I think it's for good reasons. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.